While playing Red Dead Redemption 2, you will encounter the Lemoyne Raiders and some bits and pieces left by the American Civil War, but unless you seek it out, you won't learn the history behind them. So I'm here to try and uncover as much of it as I can, and theorize for the parts that are lacking information, starting with the Civil War. So there isn't much detailed information about the war in Lemoyne, but there is enough that I can kind of make a decent guess as to how it went. I also want to say that some of the information I use in this video are from the timeline on the Red Dead wiki. I have no idea where they get this lore from, but I'm using it. First, I'll start off with the leaders. The Union General in charge of the Lemoyne campaign is General Skullick. We know that he was in charge during 1862 and led the attack on Saint Denis. It is unknown if he stayed in command until the end of the war, but I would guess that he did. In the Stranger mission, The Veteran 3, Hamish Sinclair mentions a General Buell. However, it isn't clear whether this is a fictional Buell or if it's supposed to be Don Carlos Buell or George Buell. Both were Union Brigadier Generals during the war. But even if the Buell mentioned is fictional, I doubt that he was in Lemoyne during the war, based on the way Hamish describes the war. The bodies lay so thick, you could have walked across the whole field without your boots touching mud. This isn't an exact quote, but it is very similar to descriptions of battles in the eastern and western theaters of the war. I doubt that the fighting in Lemoyne was that bloody. Keep in mind though, that we do know of the 29th Amberino Infantry Regiment, and Hamish does live in Amberino, so who knows. The Civil War report found in Fort Bernand is written by 1st Lieutenant Ronald Alger, who I'd assume was the one in charge of the fort. We also have Captain Hayden Russell, who was posted in central New Hanover in preparations for an invasion of Lemoyne was forgotten, but went insane waiting for orders. Now moving to the Confederate side. We have General Quincy Harris. He's remembered as a war hero in Lemoyne, however if you do some research and you would discover that he's not quite the hero that he's thought to be. He was accused of cowardice in late 1864, and not long later showed cowardice at the Battle of Scarlet Meadows. He also was very brutal and showed a little mercy. During his sacking of Fort Bernand, he ordered every Union soldier executed and in late 1864, he had deserters executed, as we can see with poor Garfield here. In Garfield's letter, we hear of General Quinn. From my knowledge, this is all we hear of him, but it is likely that he didn't survive the war, since he is not remembered like how Harris was. We also know of three other Confederate officers who fought at the Battle of Scarlet Meadows, Major Wilkinson, Major Smith, and Captain Fisher. We know that Major Wilkinson and Smith both die in the battle, and although we don't get any confirmation, Captain Fisher most likely died there as well. Then there's Major Hobart Crowley. He is known as a hero and has a statue in Rhodes, dedicated to him and the soldiers who served under him during a devastating charge. I doubt much happened in 1861. As far as I know, there is no information about what happened that year. If I would have to assume, then I would say that throughout the year, little happened except for a few skirmishes near the border of New Hanover. This is supported by the field hospital you can find in New Hanover near Captain Hayden Russell. It's in 1862 that we get some real action. Captain Hayden Russell, in his insanity, believes that it's April 14, 1862, and that he will soon receive orders to invade Lemoyne and take Saint Denis. This proves that no large-scale invasion of Lemoyne has occurred yet. Now, Saint Denis is clearly based on the city of New Orleans, and the fighting for the city in the Civil War began on April 18, 1862, when the Union Navy attacked the forts guarding the city, leading to the city falling on the 25th. I also want to bring attention to Copperhead Landing. According to a Lemoyne raider who fought in the war, Let me tell you something. Now you all know that most of us old timers, we fought alongside each other. Third Lemoyne Regiment, the summer of 62, we was hunkered down by Copperhead Landing for weeks. It was a terrible time, it was terrible. Food was rotten. Humidity was unbearable. Nothing we had ever got dry. But we knew that sooner or later the enemy would be coming down the line of Hachi if they wanted to take San Denis. And sure enough, one morning we woke to the distant sound, the boom of a cannon. And next thing you know, there's grenades raining down on us, modified artillery shells, leave a man with the most horrific wounds. That's like nothing you ever seen. And then I get blown up into the air, and I'm as high as a house. And then everything goes black. And then I come to, in a cloud of smoke, 
I think I must be at the gates of hell. And then it clears. And I see a swarm of them damn blue bellies. They're not 20 feet from me. And I ain't got no rifle. I ain't got no gun. I ain't got no nothing. So I just turn and I run at them. And they raise their rifles and they fire. But it don't make no sound. Their powder was too damn. So I get in there and I take them with my fist one by one until I know they're dead. And I just walk out of there as calm as the night. Something's only lost if you let it be. And as far as I can tell, you're all still breathing. Even though you're a bunch of lifeless saps. So fuck the hell up. You hear me? Now this story is clearly heavily exaggerated. But there is still useful information in it. He claims that it was summer of 1862. But most likely it was in April. If I had to guess, I would say it was April 18th. This would make sense, since the Union took the forts outside New Orleans in order to gain naval passage to the city. The same would be true for Copperhead Landing. It would be a good place to launch the attack on Saint Denis. I would also assume that the Union won the battle. Even though the Raider doesn't say they lost, he does say that he walked away after his fight, which clearly didn't happen. In conclusion of 1862, the Union most likely invaded Scarlet Meadows and took Copperhead Landing on April 18th and took Saint Denis a few days later on April 25th. Throughout the rest of the year, the Union made slow advances north from Saint Denis and south from the Scarlet Meadows, as you can see with this awful map I made. I only know of two events that occurred in the war in 1863. The first one is a possible fall of Rhodes. On March 30th, Confederate forces led by Major Hobart Crawley were routed during a charge, resulting in 3,202 Confederate casualties. Now, I don't know where exactly this charge happened, but since the statue dedicated to it is in Rhodes, it is possible that the charge was a last-ditch attempt to stop Rhodes from falling. Of course, the Quincy Harris statue is in Saint Denis, and as far as I know, he had nothing to do with the city. So it is possible that it is through Crawley's statue in the Rhodes. The next event is the sacking of Fort Bernand. On May 8th, Confederate General Quincy Harris led the attack at night. Confederate soldiers climbed nearby trees and fired down into the fort, while the rest of the force broke through the north gate. Hold up. Can I just point out how hard it would be to climb a tree with a musket and then proceed to fire and load them while in the tree? I mean, good job to them. That is not an easy thing to do. Once the Confederates broke into the fort, the Union garrison surrendered. General Harris ordered every Union soldier to be killed and their bodies burnt. The Confederates probably didn't garrison the fort afterwards since it was in New Hanover and by 1863, the Union was probably winning the fight in Le Moyne. Now we reach 1864. The only thing we know of that happened is the Battle of Scarlet Meadows. According to the letter between Garfield and Martha, the battle either happened in August, October, or sometime in between. According to Garfield's letter, General Quincy Harris is leading an army to attack a Union force at Boulder Glade for one last battle. The destroyed church is the first thing you'll see approaching the battlefield, but contrary to what you might think, it was not destroyed during the battle. According to a Le Moyne raider, wasn't the blues. We were storing powder here. Someone dropped a Lucifer and that was that. They weren't the traitors? I guess we wouldn't have had powder there if there hadn't been no war. And that feller wouldn't have dropped his match. He doesn't say when this happened, but it was most likely before 1864. Now this battle we have much more information on what happened. If you come to the battlefield on a stormy night, you can hear the sounds of the battle. Most importantly, General Quincy Harris himself. Runner, I need a goddamn runner. Get me a goddamn runner. Take this note to Major Wilkinson. 
Sir. You're gonna attack at once. At once, goddammit! Damn it. Because of this information, I'm going to try and go into more detail. I won't play every audio clip, but based on them, I believe that the Confederates probably didn't actually attack. They most likely moved into Boulder Glade sometime in August, and within the next month or two they would have built the defenses we can see in game. Sometime later, Union forces attacked from the west, first assaulting the farmhouses, and as you can hear in the audio clips, General Harris ordered it to be defended to the last man. However, eventually these houses would fall, and Union forces would attack the main defenses. I believe that the Union took the main defenses, since General Harris probably set up his camp in the church, and eventually he moved his camp away from the battlefield because he's a coward, and was afraid of being cut off by Union forces. Now this seems to point towards a Union victory, but according to the timeline on the Red Dead wiki, the Confederates actually repelled the assault and won the battle. So at some point while defending the church, the battle turned, giving the Confederates the advantage, and giving them the win. I should point out that all those details are speculation. I have no idea how exactly the battle went down, I just guessed based on the information I have. After the battle, I doubt much more happened. Most likely General Harris surrendered in 1865 or just chilled in southern Lemoyne until the war ended. Whichever it was, the outcome is the same. General Quincy Harris is remembered as a hero of the Confederacy. Lemoyne re-enters the Union, and many people in the state have deep hatred for the federal government. A hatred that wouldn't go away anytime soon. According to the Red Dead Wiki, the Lemoyne Raiders were founded in 1874, however, their origins date back further. One of the first times you loot a Lemoyne Raider, you can get a letter. In this letter, someone named William Marcus Anderson is writing to his brother. And what he's talking about in this letter is Bleeding Kansas. In case you don't know what Bleeding Kansas is, it was a series of clashes between anti-slavery groups called Jayhawkers and pro-slavery groups called Bushwhackers in Kansas and Missouri from 1854 to 1861. We know this letter is from Bleeding Kansas because of the name Jayhawkers and Bushwhackers, and the mention of the raid on Lawrence, Kansas in 1856. And no, it was not Quantrill's raid of Lawrence. If it was, then the letter would have mentioned Quantrill's raiders. Most likely the person who wrote this letter is part of a group of Bushwhackers who call themselves Lemoyne Raiders. This proves that the name Lemoyne Raiders dates back before the Civil War. As I said earlier, the Lemoyne Raiders were founded in 1874. However, we don't know much more information than that. Most likely a few confederate veterans of the war gathered somewhere like Shady Bell and founded the Lost Cause militia we have in game. Since there isn't much more known history of the group, I'm just going to talk more about the group itself. The photo for the gang shows five members of the group. I believe that these five are the leaders. The Sandini police chief claims that Lindsey Walford is the leader, and that guy on the left in the photo looks quite a lot like him. Also, the police chief seems to believe that once the leader is dealt with, then the gang will fall apart without leadership. Spoiler worth ahead, skip to whatever time I put on screen. In the epilogue of the game, which is set 8 years later, the Lemoyne Raiders are still around. They're just not as strong as they were in 1899, but they didn't fall apart. 
so either another member took over or they had multiple leaders who stayed more hidden. I should also point out that this photo has probably been taken somewhat recently since all these guys are old, so there's a good chance that at least one of the five, other than Walford, is still alive by 1899. The actions of the group you can see for yourself. They rob, kill tax collectors, they try and burn down the San Denis Library, they kill a state legislator, they basically do as much as they can to try and attack the federal government. But to be honest, all of it's in vain. Killing a few tax collectors won't bring back the Confederacy. Now there isn't much more to say. I covered all the lore that I know of. There probably are some things I missed, but whatever. I'm done here for now. I don't know how to do this outro, so I'll probably just end this mid-sentence.